Well, I hope you enjoyed that series of trademarks in Las Vegas. Take a look here at a combination of all of those videos. All right, one of the first stops I have to do is come to Dutch Bros, get me some coffee. So if you take a look at the facade of the building, they've got some uh, protection in the trade dress there with the blue roof um, and with the gray walls and white windows. I don't see any windows on this side of the building, um, but you can see some slogans there, love abounds. Um, the, the peace sign finger right here in this area there. So let's get some Dutch Bros coffee. You can see some of the trademarks here. Dutch Classics, Rebel Energy Drink. White mocha in my hands here. And you can see all the marks here on the container itself. We've got the windmill here with the, with the four blades in silhouette. It's got the blue top. Um, Dutch Bros here uh, includes horizontal stripe design in yellow, red, and blue. The color yellow extends beyond the stripes at the right and becomes a background for the word coffee in red stylized cursive letters. And at the top, they have another windmill here. And so taking a look at the cup itself as well, they have a registered trademark for the color blue used as the surface of the lid on the packaging. Uh, when I was looking at the trademark, I thought, well, they have this really weird sippy cup lid thing. Maybe they have a trademark for that, but it's just the blue top. They've, they've dotted out the line, so they don't actually own a registration for the configuration of the lid itself. As always, trademarks are fun. Now for breakfast. Here I'm at a place that really, really knows how to protect its trademarks, so they, and they do so. And they have some really neat branding, as you can see behind me here at the pink box donuts um, with the sprinkles. They're also protecting light pink striped pattern applied to the flooring of a restaurant. And also they have a stanchion post consisting of sprinkles filled in that post. The interior wall of the retail baker shop consisting of a coffee to go type cup appearing to be tipped over and spilling liquid. The mark also consists of a pink ceiling and pink drip like features on a wall in the interior of the restaurant and pink striped feature applied to countertops and bottom of cabinetry. So Pink Box actually has trademark applications for their box, which includes stylized sprinkle designs on all sides of the box. Um, it includes a six sided box and lid, the color pink with stripes they're on. Well here, this is interesting because this is a patriotic box um, and this is something I don't see that they actually uh, filed. But let's see, they might in the future, but let's see what I came up with today. And um, the donuts I picked um, are a poop and a peace sign glazed. So these are actually registered trademarks of Pink Box Donut Company. Interesting enough, um, on the wall it says do not lick the wall but um, I was unable to find an actual registration or even an application for that but I did find do not lick the box and do not lick the glass so um, interesting stuff and I would be remiss not to mention the application that was recently filed for door handles this mark will be published for opposition on October 3rd 2023 so right around the corner and it consists of a three-dimensional configuration of a doorknob depicted by a pink sprinkled donut as always trademarks are fun so behind me is one of the greatest Mexican restaurants of all time, Nacho Daddy. They also have some great trademarks, um, including the name. And it's kind of a fun double entendre. Um, I wish my wife was hearing me this trip um, so that we could go have multiple entrees. And here you can see the scorpion that's part of their branding with their um, shot. They have a drink uh, that has a scorpion in it. But Nacho Daddy is home of the original scorpion shot. And you can see this bell here that they ring when somebody orders the drink. Also, check out the merch utilizing the famous fabulous Las Vegas sign. There's also this little tortilla chip with a sombrero holding a beer that is still an active trademark for bar and restaurant services in class 43. Nacho Daddy also has their stinger scorching hot sauce made with real scorpions. The best food here is either the flaming fajitas or the nachos. When you come to Nacho Daddy and order nachos, there's never a dry chip. I plan on eating here anyway, but the great trademarks are an added bonus. At the location on the strip, they also have a terrarium with scorpions in it, but I was only able to spot one and it's kind of dark so you can barely see it in this video. As always, trademarks are fun. 
this welcome to fabulous las vegas nevada sign is classic you have to stop here when you come by to vegas it's essentially a landmark of of vegas what's really fascinating about this sign is that betty willis designed it and legend has it that she wanted it to be a gift and to be in the public domain now betty willis later was quoted as saying quote if i had copyrighted the sign it probably wouldn't have been used as much and wouldn't be as famous but it would be nice to have a dime for every time it's been used end quote so i know that that deals with copyright which is a different intellectual property than trademark but what's really interesting is as you know trademark deals with source identification and first use in commerce around town you'll see a lot of souvenirs and stores utilizing the sign and so um, what I'll do walking around town is I'll find anybody who's utilized these, maybe as a source identifier, and I'll show you what those are. So it made me think, are there any registrations for this sign? And there are. There are a handful of registrations. There was one registration for the sign in class 30 for candy and chocolate candies owned by an individual from Sweden. There's also this registration in class 32 for non-alcoholic beverages, namely sports drinks, energy drinks, and energy shots, and drinking water. You can find another registration in class 30 for barbecue sauce. And here's another registration in class 33 for distilled spirits. As always, trademarks are fun. This is Resorts World, which is the subject of trade dress litigation. As you recall, trade dress is a part of trademarks. You can see the LED wall, and you can also see the red banding, the horizontal banding between the floors, and also the red on the sides of the building. In 2007, when Resorts Holdings LLC got a registered trademark for its trade dress of a three-dimensional building with concave facade, curved roofline, and wind in stylized script. And why does it matter? Um, you'll notice the bayish, kind of whitish, light, horizontal bands between the buildings. But look how close it is to this, Resorts World. And when Resorts Holdings LLC sued Resorts World Las Vegas LLC for copying its three-dimensional building with con concave facade and curved bronze glass coupled with horizontal banding above and between the lines of glass panes. The complaint contained photographs of the construction of Resorts World in 2018 and you can see the beige striping between the floors of bronze glass. The proximity of Resorts World to the wind and Encore was part of the problem. In Resort World's response, they note that Resorts World is an S-shape, not just a curve. So you can see here that there's two buildings associated with Resorts World instead of just the one curve building that you have over here in Wynn and Encore, respectively. They also touted the huge LED mesh on the south side, which, quite frankly, in my opinion, is a bit lackluster. They make an interesting note about potential for sunlight to reflect off of glass in the pool area and create sunburn. This was an issue at the Vidara. Resorts World tested glass of gold, rose gold, and bronze to minimize what's been called the solar convergence phenomenon. Here's a photograph of Resorts World when I was in Vegas in 2020. You can see both the Encore and Future Resorts World. If you take a look at the lines between the glass, you can see that they are partially beige and partially red. As a result of the litigation, the parties ended up settling early in the case, which prevented construction workers from being laid off. The new design would resolve the concerns, Wynn Resorts said. As always, Trademarks are fun.
trademarks are final.